Hi, I'm John, the Community Currency Engineer Termel, and this is part two of my commentary on Stoboy.com's article from July 5th, 2009, titled Alternative Currencies is Small the New Big. If it's commonplace and could pass it along to others that know me, well, other people who don't know you will take your IOU too, especially if it's guaranteed by the big time bank at the top, the Unilets. If this were taken up by celebrities, say Oprah and Al Gore, even retail chains would accept the money. Well, yeah, it'd be nice to have your name on, you know, Oprah Winfrey's uh, Let's Je card saying that you did something for her. And that's why money would become a scorecard in the world of the future. So this money could be printed out with appropriate barcodes and other information so that people could check the money as authentic. But if everybody's got some, no one needs to be corrupt anymore. And by the way, where are you going to hide it? And what it stands for and who stands behind it? Cell phone pictures could be directed to the currency platform website and all the info would be bounced back but to the phone in real time. Well, I remember 10 years ago at the Chicago Community Currency uh, 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 Conference in 1999 when I tried to get Oprah Winfrey to come because now she's on TV with poor people losing their houses all the time going, oh, it's so sad, what can we do? Nothing. She should have come to the conference you know, 10 years ago. But I heard about the favors system with Sergio Lube, L-U-B, and his currency was issued by his store to his customers and anybody else, but the currency had your picture on your checks on your currency. So that was a pretty neat uh, piece of money, first time I'd ever seen that. So, and they're still going strong for the favors system uh, with Sergio Loop. So, Oprah Winfrey. Or the money could be purely digital, being passed via messages from cell to cell. Well, sure it couldn't. It could have been emailed, like I did when I emailed all those people. I owe you five hours, and I'm putting my debt down in my Unilets page there. It's official. You can go look to see that I acknowledge I owe you five hours for what you gave me, or 20 for those four nights in one place. So, um, I might, okay, uh, such an open money platform would support all the varieties of tinkering with the chips. For example, I might opt for demurrage, a really stupid idea, on my sto bucks, meaning that the value of the bucks decreases a little bit every month. Yeah, you got to keep checking to see what his chips are worth. They ain't worth the same thing all the time, and he thinks that's a smart idea. Incenting people to spend it quickly. Yeah, let's get rid of his bucks. They're losing value all the time. Or to convert it back to dollars. Yeah, let's get rid of his stow bucks. They're pieces of trash. You can get Termel's one-hour bills that are always worth 60 minutes. Or you can get the stow bucks that keep losing their value. What do you want to keep? So, geez. Also, others could accept these stow bucks and turn them into their own personal money through the platform. But yeah, deposit them in your account. Sure, sure, sure. I find it interesting that nothing like this has emerged. Well, you ain't been looking much, which is one of the reasons I'm working on the Neo.org project. <laughs> so he's bringing a lot of not knowledge to the project, right? Sad. This means that successful alt cash is not going to be used by all members of some locality because it will have to be partisan. Those who don't agree with what the money stands for will not use it. Those that do use it will agree with the principles it stands for and are opposed to the interest of those that the cash is designed to counter. Now to really show what this means, we're going to replace all cash with chips. And we'll use the word chips so that people who can visualize poker chips in their mind are going to be able to try and figure out what this man is saying, okay? I'm going to read this again now. This means that the successful chips are not going to be used by all members of some locality because the chips will have to be partisan. <laughs> Those who don't agree with what the chips stand for will not use the chips. Those that do use the chips will agree with the principles the chips stand for and are opposed to the interests of those that the chips is designed to counter. Wow! Confusing, isn't it? When you don't talk about chips. Future philanthropy might come in the form of alt cash. Imagine if the Google twins decided to create Google Bucks. A purely digital money backed by a few of their countless billions 
where a penny per dollar would be diverted. Ah, oh, forget your diversion all the time, your charities. Forget that. Just what do you got about Google chips? <laughs> Directed towards battery research, maybe. Jeez. Every bit head and dweeb on the planet would stand in line to get this money. Well, that's because we could buy stuff with it, you know. And they would ostentatiously try to use it at every opportunity. Yes, they would. But people outside the tech world wouldn't care. Why not? They can use it too. Gates could create money that supported malaria prevention. Well, I went and picketed Bill Gates back in 1999 during the Seattle, the battle in Seattle. I went every afternoon saying, hey, why don't you run a big worldwide community currency with your software available, say, 20% in time dollars? And he could have been the arteries and veins of the world commerce that you're asking them to do now. So he's 10 years overdue. I don't think he's going to start now. Uh, Soros would mint his own cash dedicated to the goals of the Open Society Foundation. Is it worth an hour or not? You know, come to think of it, he should. I'm not going to bet on him if it's just worth him, you know. Tell me it's time, I'll bet. He shall buy. He should implement open money of a sort, I suggest. Well, like I suggested to Bill Gates in 1999. Go read about it. Battle in Seattle and Terminal. So this is Stowe Boyd, an internationally recognized authority on social applications and their impact on business, media, and society, launched a new interview series examining the future of money. A series sponsored in part by Neo.org, a nonprofit. So comments, interesting ones. Um, from Richard Schulte says, this is definitely what seems to be happening on the ground. We, the Columbia Exchange Circle, ComoExchange.org, have collaborated with a few other community currencies who are very much taking a nearly political approach to regional economic resilience. Hey, I have an abolitionist party that preached this. So I've been involved in politics for 30 years, even if I started alone. A huge part of it is what's called ABCD in community development circles, asset-based community development. The idea is that CCs can be a, used as a tool to expound upon capacities, the skills, the knowledge, the passion, and hard work with which communities function day to day. The hegemonic economic system tends to emphasize a more needs-based approach, wherein only multinationals and oversized firms can provide the stuff to fill in these great gaps in our lives. In this sense, many community currencies are beginning to realize their role in micro-enterprise development in skill sharing and fostering community knowledge, capacity, and inclusion. The end result, once the proper forces coalesce and the appropriate technologies are transferred, will be a leap in regional self-sufficiency and community interdependence and real wealth, as well as potential for a concurrent revival of civil society and deliberative democracy. However, community currencies are only a stepping stone in crossing a sweeping current. Community land trusts, worker-owned cooperatives, community banking, and micro... That's what you do with the chips once they're fixed. I don't care. Housing, purchasing cooperatives. You don't need purchasing cooperatives when everybody's got their own credit card. And they can all buy their own. You don't need health insurance when everybody's got their own credit card and they can buy their own. You don't need auto insurance when everybody's got their own credit card and can pay for their own accident once in a while. So all these things disappear when we're economically empowered with our interest-free credit cards. So uh, all these will be vital tools in re-realizing the capacity and wealth that exists in the communities. But you got to start by fixing the chips, then all this other good stuff happens. Wealth exists in many forms and can be developed and exchanged in many ways, and the key is putting them into the hands of the community and our progeny. By the way, I like the term alt-cash that you use, Richard Schulte. So, next guy uh, writes back, and sadly, it's a guy named LF Acrylicis, so probably joking around, and says, I've been working on alternative currencies for over a year and a half that attempts to solve many of the systematic problems we have. Oh, poker chips are so tough. To, all the systematic problems of poker chips we're going to hear about now. One, which backing commodity? Well, IOUs, cars, boats, whatever. Think about it. Uh, we like the idea of time. Yeah, you're right. Being the synthetic commodity because it's universal to all people. Next, how do you set the valuation on a unit? Well, an hour. What's hard? You know, time value is usually expressed in terms of efficiency. Energy usually saves you time, so we derive prices with that fact. 
Well, no. You start with your stable one-hour bills, then you have a free market where people bid on what they want to pay for that product that's for sale. That's how you determine its true value in the marketplace. How do you bootstrap an economy without tying it to any other existing currency? Well, just give everybody enough to start with. And 40 bucks each isn't enough. Like Ithaca hours. How do you avoid credit bubbles? Well, what is a credit bubble with poker chips? Think about it. So, how do you remove taxation? Well, I'm not interested. You know, that's splashing in the pool. How do you solve insurance? Well, that's, again, a function of the poker chips. We all chip in our fair share after the guy's accident, and he'll chip in his fair share after mine. Hard.